with Sally Tomato and today we are going to create Myrna, the big sister to the Zippy crossbody bags pattern. Jess was inspired by the classic movie Double Wedding starring Myrna Loy when she designed this bag pattern. We're sure this bag is going to be an endearing accessory in your wardrobe. This bag features an adjustable crossbody strap, two exterior zip pockets, an exterior slip pocket with an optional magnetic snap, and it's shaped with a box bottom that's fully lined. That may sound like a lot of details, but Jess has divided the instructions into easy to follow sections complete with illustrations. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them from your local quilt shop. Please try to support your local independent retailers whenever you can. So let's head over to the work table, open your pattern, and start your next classic bag project. The finished size of Myrna is 9 inches wide by 10 inches high by 1.5 inches deep, not including the strap. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover and take a minute to check for the pattern corrections on our website so you'll have the most current information. You'll need a main fabric, a contrast fabric, and a lining fabric. If you're using quilting cotton for the main or contrast fabric, you'll also want to have a fusible woven interfacing. Then you'll need three zippers and hardware, D-rings, swivel hooks, a slider buckle, and a magnetic snap. I'm also going to add a handmade label, a couple rivets, and a tassel with the tassel cap hardware just for extra style. The Sally Tomato hardware and the zippers and nylon coils are coordinated so your bag will look perfect. Next, gather a few tools and notions to have ready. It's always good to put a new needle in your sewing machine and then select thread. I'll be using Sulky 40 weight Poly Deco thread. It looks great for top stitching and is very durable. Clover Wonder Clips are perfect for holding fabric layers together. Chalk or removable pen for marking. Basting tape, spray or glue, a stiletto, a zipper foot, Teflon foot, and if you're adding rivets and a tassel, you'll need a rotary punch, rivet setting tools, a Phillips head screwdriver, and hot glue. All right, time to get all the pieces cut. Be sure to check your pattern to cut the correct size pieces for the adjustable crossbody strip. These will be different for cotton and cork or faux leather fabrics. And keep track of all those pieces too. Use the pre-made labels that are printed in your pattern and clip or pin them to your pieces as you cut them. And here's an extra tip from Jess. Keep the interfacing with their coordinating fabric pieces. It helps keep you organized. Fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the exterior front bottom and the exterior back. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing interfacing to the fabric. Now, with wrong sides together, fold the exterior slip pocket C in half, meeting the short ends. Press along the fold, then unfold the pocket and fuse interfacing to the wrong side against the fold while matching the side edges. Once the interfacing is fused, refold the pocket piece with wrong sides together and set it aside. Then we're going to trim the main zipper to the measurement in the pattern instructions. Make sure the zipper pull is inside your measured length before trimming. Also, refer to your pattern for the specific stitch lengths and seam allowances for creating your Myrna bag. Stitch across the zipper raw ends to prevent the pull from sliding off. Now, if you're using cork, full leather, or vinyl for the contrast main zipper casing, you'll skip this next step. With wrong sides together, fold the opposite sides of the main zipper casing to the middle and press well for a nice flat edge. Now this is for both fabric and the cork or full leather or vinyl fabrics. Fold each main zipper casing in half with wrong sides together and slide one casing over each end of the main zipper so the raw end is tucked in between the casing. The ends of the zipper should be pushed tight against the fold of the casing. 
Use a sewing clip to hold the casings in place while we head to the sewing machine. Top stitch the casings to the zipper. Trim the extending sides of the casing even with the zipper tape and set this zipper aside for the time being. It's on to prepare the zipper pockets. You may find a zipper foot or a narrow foot helpful for the following steps. With right sides up, align one long zipper along the top short edge of pocket A. Let the zipper pull and the ends of the zipper extend beyond the sides of the pocket. The pull should be on the left side when it's closed. Use a few sewing clips or basting tape to keep the layers aligned. Baste the zipper to the pocket. You can use a longer stitch length as basting is just a way to hold the layers together securely. All right, fold pocket A up and away from the seam. Then fold pocket A in half with right sides together aligning the bottom edge of pocket A with the bottom edge of the zipper. Make sure the side edges of the pocket are aligned. Baste the zipper to the pocket. Now repeat these steps for adding the zipper to the top short edge of pocket B. But do not trim the zippers yet. I've also pinned the labels back onto the pockets so I don't mix them up later. It's time to begin assembling the front of the Myrna bag. Make sure the pockets are out of the way for each step and that the zipper pulls are all close toward the same side or edge. Let's start with pocket A, checking that the pocket part is down out of the way. Place the contrast front top piece to the top of pocket A zipper along the width, right sides together, and then check that the side edges are also aligned. Hold the layers together with sewing clips or basting tape. Sew along the aligned edges. This is where a zipper foot or the narrow foot is really helpful, allowing you to stitch quite close to the zipper. Press the front top away from the zipper. I'm using a seam roller because I have cork fabric as the contrast fabric. And then top stitch along the seam. I'm reusing a label to mark the top of the front, which will help with the next steps. Now move pocket A up out of the way. With right sides together, place the contrast front middle piece to the bottom of the pocket A zipper along the width, making sure again that the side edges are aligned. Then hold the layers together with sewing clips, basting tape, or both, and sew along the aligned edges. Now press the front middle piece away from the zipper and top stitch near that seam edge making sure again that the side edges are aligned. Then hold the layers together with sewing clips, basting tape, or both, and sew along the aligned edges. With right sides together, place the front middle piece to the top of pocket B zipper, aligning the side edges. Then you're going to sew along the width, making sure the pockets are still out of the way. Press the pocket away from the front middle piece and then again top stitch along the seam edge. Now move the pockets up out of the way, then with right sides together align the exterior front bottom piece to the bottom of the pocket B zipper, making sure the side edges are aligned and then pin or clip the edges. Sew the layers together along the width, then we're going to press the front bottom piece away from the zipper and top stitch along the seam. Fold both pockets down towards the bottom and align the side edges. This is really important. Remember to move the zipper pulls toward the inside of the bag before you stitch. Now base the sides of the pocket to the front pieces. Take the extra minute to back stitch over the zippers for additional security. Now we're ready to trim the zipper ends even with the side edges. Add a handmade label just above the top pocket zipper. Visit our YouTube channel for a detailed video tutorial on installing this hardware. If you'd like to add a magnetic snap closure to your slip pocket, visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato to view a video tutorial for installing this hardware and refer to your pattern for the snap placement. Be sure to insert the second half of the snap through only one layer of the pocket on the half that has the interfacing. Now we're going to find that pocket C piece that we set aside and top stitch the top folded edge. Position the pocket on the exterior back so that the bottom and side raw edges are even. If you added a magnetic snap, your snaps should click right together. Base the pocket in place along the sides and bottom edges. 
With wrong sides together, fold the long sides of the strap connector to the middle and then press. Fold the connector in half so the raw edges are then in the middle. Top stitch along each long side. Now subcut the connector piece into two pieces. Slide one D-ring over the end of each strap connector. Fold each connector in half, wrong sides together. Then position one connector on the exterior back, down from the top edge. Let the raw edges extend beyond the side edge, with the D-ring towards the center of the back piece. Sew the connector to the exterior back, making sure to back stitch. Repeat for the opposite side of the back with the remaining connector. Make sure all of your exterior front and back pieces measure the same height. Trim them if needed, then mark the top center of the exterior front, exterior back, and main zipper. I did my trimming and marking off camera. So now with right sides together, center the main zipper along the top edge of the front. The zipper pull should be on the left side when closed, and the zipper should be shorter than the front top edge. Now baste the zipper in place. Okay, with right side down, layer one lining piece over the front, aligning the top edges, and then sew the layers together along the top. You may find the zipper foot is really helpful here. Take your time and don't worry if you have to stop and move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. Press the front and lining pieces away from the zipper. Now top stitch, starting and stopping just at the main zipper ends. On the exterior back, tape the D-rings in place to keep them out of the way. With right sides together, center the unsewn edge of the main zipper along the top edge of the back. Use sewing clips or basting tape to hold the layers and then repeat the same process as for the front to attach the zipper and lining. Now unzip the main zipper about halfway to prepare for turning later. Unzip the pocket zippers as well. So each pull is centered, that way they're out of the way, and you're ready to assemble your bag. With right sides together, center the long edge of the contrast bag bottom along the bottom edge of the exterior front. Use sewing clips to hold only the front and bottom together. You don't want to catch the lining in the stitching. Now sew together, starting and stopping just in from the corners of the bottom piece. At the beginning and end of the seam, cut the seam allowance up to the seam, but do not cut through the seam. This will help create the boxed bottom later. With right sides together, center the opposite long edge of the contrast bag bottom along the bottom edge of the exterior back. Use sewing clips to hold only the back and the bottom together, again keeping the lining out of the way. Sew together, again starting and stopping in from the short edges of the bottom piece. At the beginning and end of the seam, cut the seam allowance up to the seam stitching and repeat the same steps to attach the lining bag bottom to the lining front and back. For the lining seams, use the wider seam allowance listed in your pattern, starting and stopping again just in from the short edges. The wider seam allowance in the lining will make the lining slightly smaller and it will fit neatly into your bag. With right sides together, align the side edges of the exterior front and back. Use sewing clips to hold them in place. And with right sides together, align the side edges of the lining front and back. Again, use sewing clips to hold the layers in place. This is another spot where it's really helpful to use the zipper foot in this step. Start by sewing the sides of the lining together with the wider seam allowance. As you reach the top of the lining, gradually decrease your seam allowance to the regular seam allowance to sew the sides of the front and back together. Leave an unsewn opening along one of the side edges of the lining in order to turn the bag right side out later. Trim the lining seam. Do not trim the seam allowance from the open section of the lining. Create a box bottom in each bottom corner of the exterior. With right sides together, Match the side seam edge and the short edge of the bag bottom. Sew together to create the bottom corners of the bag. Make sure to back stitch at each end. Clip into the allowance and then you can also trim seam allowances and each corner to reduce the bulk. Do not cut through the seam and repeat these same steps to create the boxed bottom corners in the lining. However, this time sew the wider seam allowance for the lining seams. Trim the lining seam allowance and then turn the bag right side out by pushing the fabric through the unsewn section in the lining. Gently push out the corners to their final shape 
and hand sew or top stitch the opening in the lining closed. Now push the lining back inside the bag. Remove the tape from the D-rings if it's still holding them in place. Jess has a great video tutorial for creating the crossbody strap and there are complete instructions in your pattern. And there are a few extra designer details that you can add. Small rivets at the strap ends and a tassel using the Sally Tomato tassel cap hardware. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel for viewing video tutorials on using these hardware pieces. Your Myrna bag is completed and ready wherever you go. I love all the pockets and I know Jess would love to see photos of your Myrna, so tag us at hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Myrna bag to keep us inspired. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful. We really do value your suggestions. So thanks for joining me and happy sewing.